This is the Radiolink T8S, which is a full range radio. It supports eight channels and it has a range of up to two kilometers. It has two three-way switches on the back, a potentiometer on the top, and a single momentary button. It's a really compact radio and the gimbals feel really good for the size. It comes with an R8FM receiver as well as a spring and rocker for centering the throttle. Now the first radio I'd like to compare this to is the FR Sky X-Lite Pro, which is another compact controller style radio. The Radio Link weighs substantially less than the X-Lite Pro, but it's also a much less substantial radio. In terms of cost, it's only a quarter of the price of the X-Lite Pro. Nor does it support the more popular FR Sky protocol. And here's how it looks compared to the X9 Lite. And finally, here's a PlayStation DualShock 4, which is just about the same size as the Radio Link T8S. And with that, I'd like to emphasize what I think this radio is really good for. It's good for learning FPV on a simulator. You just need this on-the-go USB-C adapter as well as a USB to PPM adapter here. And with that, you can play Sims on your phone. Unfortunately, this particular USB adapter doesn't support SBUS, so you need to switch it over to PPM mode, which is the red light here. You have to double tap to get it into that mode. Once you've got that flashing, just turn on the radio and it'll bind automatically. Here we've got FPV Freerider, which works great with this radio. Unfortunately, it's only available for Android. But if you do have an Android phone and a VR enclosure, you can get a pretty good simulator experience with this for a pretty low upfront cost. You just have to buy the radio, the adapters, and an enclosure if you don't already have one. Now, normally when you play a simulator with a radio like this, you'll connect it to your computer via USB. But this radio doesn't support USB. That's why we have to use this um, adapter to uh, connect it to your receiver. Now, this receiver will work in a quad, and that's what it's really intended for, but um, we're using it to play a simulator. I think it's pretty neat to be able to play a sim without a cable connected to it, so this is a nice feature. But this adapter is not so flexible. Now, here we are playing FPV Air 2, which is a really nice simulator. So one problem with this little USB adapter is that it doesn't work on every simulator. I couldn't get it to work on liftoff on both my Mac and my PC. And I didn't get to test it on any other sims, but um, it's not as universal as, say, an FR Sky Radio over USB. Now, there are other adapters that will let you plug your receiver into your computer, but um, they're a little more complicated and uh, require a few more components. So I thought this was the simplest and easiest one to use. The other adapter does support SBUS and will work on just about any simulator. So you might want to have a look at that. I'll be sure to link it in the description. So let's take this thing apart. We've got six screws on the back and the plastic casing is fairly cheap feeling. It's not the nicest and there's no rubber grip. On the back plate, we've got a single cell LiPo battery and this is rechargeable through the USB port. The USB port will also let you configure the radio and we'll get to that later. We've got the antenna on top, the RF module in the middle and let's look at the other side of the main board. Now these gimbals are not adjustable, so you cannot change the spring tension, but I think the stock spring tension is pretty good. Now to get into the radio configuration, you have to use an Android app. And you also need to use a USB cable and the same on-the-go cable that we used for the simulator earlier. Unfortunately, this app is not available in the App Store, so you need to download it and install it to your phone manually, which can be a little troublesome, but it does work. And unfortunately, again, it's not available for iOS. So you do need an Android phone to configure this radio. Now it does work out of the box and you may not even need to use this app, but if you want to get into some advanced settings and mixers, then you're going to have to find a way to use it. Finally, to calibrate the radio, you hold your sticks like this with the left trim, power on, it'll beep, move your sticks to the corners, and then press right trim to indicate that you're done. So my final thoughts, this is a Radio Link radio, so you have to use Radio Link receivers. Those are not as prevalent or as common as FR Sky receivers, but they work just as well, and you do get up to two kilometers of range, which more realistically is about one kilometer, and the receivers are inexpensive and small, so I don't consider that a huge problem. This is probably the smallest radio with hobby-grade gimbals, so I do like that about it. It's very compact, and it does do full-range FPV. You can use it to play Sims, and you can use it on your regular quads. You may not have as many options in terms of micros, 
because those generally don't come with radio link receivers, but you can add a radio link receiver to a micro if you'd like. Anyway, those are my final thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.